But um, more importantly than using, uh, engaging in culture in order to win political campaigns is engaging in culture in order to win the culture, in order to yeah. have influence there, not just because you want John McCain to win or, or uh, you know, a specific political candidate, but because you want conservative ideals and conservative principles to be pervasive in society. That's that's the real goal, I think, yeah. for conservatives. For Republicans, the goal is to get elected. For conservatives, the goal is to influence how people think. Right. All right, hey guys, Steve Bukowski here with another episode of Games and Guns. I've got David Fredoso with me today. How you doing, David? I'm doing great, thanks. Yeah. Um, we're going to play a little bit of uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3, a, a real classic. Who do you think you're going to be? Uh, I'll just pick Wolverine. He's cool. It's really a button mashing game. <laughs> yeah, I'm probably just going to so push just, a lot of buttons. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Oh, okay, okay. I was saying it shows my feet. No, sorry, no, you're stuck with some lame character. I have Ryu and Chris. Who yeah, has Chris? Shooting the button mash right there. Am I so supposed to be Chris fighting you? Is this how this Yeah, we're fighting each other. Alright. So, <laughs> it's gonna be... It'll be interesting. I've done this in a long, long time. Oh, God. oh my gosh. Just pushing a lot of buttons can do a lot. Alright. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, hey. Look at that. Look at that. That was good. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Yeah. Go down, Wolverine. Die, Rhino. Alright. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's oh, yeah. I haven't seen him yet. I'm gonna shoot you a oh. times. Hey, that's not fair. <laughs> it doesn't seem fair at all. <laughs> Stay over there. <laughs> Don't come over there. Okay. Oh, a shotgun right to the face. That's pretty good. I got you. <laughs> ah, no! No! Shoot him at the shotgun! Yeah, that Spidey. Sad. That was really close. Spider punch. Woo! A stupid, oh man, I won. A stupid spider killed a guy with multiple guns. Uh, make any sense. Oh, is this the guy from like um, Great Ghosts and Graveyards or something? Ghosts and I don't know, I don't know all the Capcom games. Arthur, yeah, yeah, that's him. That's totally the what? guy from. That's like the hardest video game ever made. What game is that? Uh, Ghosts and Goblins is it called or Ghosts and and it, like you start off in a graveyard and you like you can like throw these little daggers. It's just a really strange um, old game, but it's just the controlling on it was so bad. I mean, this is like this is like early 1990s. Yeah. This is like the original Nintendo era. That's the only experience I have from playing video games, really, is from yeah. that period. What, yeah. So, what was your favorite game? Um, boy, I. I, I I really liked the Zelda series back then. I mean, it was the, it was new. You know, yeah, you have to... <laughs> your video game experience being from the '90s is actually probably a pretty good, uh, a pretty big leap over a lot of other people like Jim Garrity. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, some people are like Pong, uh, especially in this. <laughs> yeah, in the CPAC special that I did, where, no where offense, I played with Jim. a lot of people. <laughs> um, a lot of them have just never, like, never played any video games ever in their entire lives. Getting to what, uh, the main topic for, the, for this episode, I think I wanted to talk about how conservatives and Republicans should engage in culture. Right. And this, this uh, is stemmed from a panel over the weekend at Texas Online uh, with Matt Walsh and um, Kevin Williamson and Larry O'Connor was moderating. Bill Little was also there. This caused a lot of uh, uproar and anger and all kinds of and like hundreds of Facebook anger. comments. And yeah, there was right. a, a lot of talk about this on social media, and um, <laughs> there's been a couple of posts written. Uh, Luke Garrity did a sum up from the event. Weirdly, though, uh, nobody captured any video of it. For those of us who weren't actually there, there's no actual. Um, video for us to watch to see why it was so upset. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, the Matt Wolf, you know, when you, when you asked me earlier about this, I said, who's that? But then I, I have been to his blog before. Like, I, uh, right. I totally uh, have read his stuff before. Um, there he 
Boom! Oh. Look at that giant gun. Dead. I think you're pointing out a lot of people objected to uh, yeah, a lot, presentation. A lot of people were upset at Matt Walsh, from what I can tell. And some people were upset with uh, Kenny Williams. Yeah. As well. um, which I, I could honestly, from reading both of their work uh, over the years, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> You're way better at this game. Well, so this means it. whatever I say <laughs> next is right. Um, <laughs> I find Kevin to be one of the most persuasive um, writers out there and also just the most capable of delivering the death blow to just about anyone. Like, I've made a note to myself never to get on his wrong side. Right, but the thing with him is, uh, um, I think it's, from reading both of them, Re most recent pieces, so uh, Matt Walsh wrote two stuff for this. He was talking about divorce parties that people would like celebrate getting divorced and right. he was talking about how that, how awful uh, a trend that is, how society, or, or at least liberals, have taken things that are bad and sort of turned them around to be, to make that, try to make them yeah. good, essentially. You know, divorce is a, is a terrible thing, I imagine. I could imagine someone feeling like they needed some encouragement when it happened. So, like, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. It depends on the context. But, like, as far as divorce goes, I probably, I mean, you know, I'm, like, with Pope Francis and uh, um, and Jesus on these issues, like, no man tear right. asunder. But at the same time, like, it has to be something really horrible to go through. It can't be. Right. I don't, I don't want to, like, seem like I'm, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would feel like it. someone going through that really needs a, a, a pick me up. So I don't know. I, I just find but it sort she, of hard uh, to judge. But yeah, I mean, and his thing was very much uh, just sticking with what he believes is he believes that divorce is wrong, and, and it's a very um, straightforward and, and uh, you know, not it's not really it's not necessarily forgiving, I guess you could say, but it's also probably is also right, uh, you know, as far as his actual opinion on the issue. Like I would say. And the same is true for Kevin Williamson. Um, his latest piece on uh, like transgenders, yeah, and the whole issue of um, sort of being able to will yourself into a different uh, sex, even though it right. doesn't make any sense uh, from a biological, factual standpoint. Um, but that's also another situation where he's not he's not trying to be forgiving or, or uh, you know, compassionate or understanding. Right? But he's focused on just telling the, the truth. Like, you know, yeah. And then, so that's what I see from from both of these guys, that their their interest, their, interest, their main priority is to tell the truth um, and to not sort of, you know, uh, <clears throat> crimp around the edges. Because they're, not, sure. they're not trying to make friends in the, the opposite uh, group from them. You always, you, know I mean? you certainly always want to tell the truth. You, sure. You also don't, you know, and again, I, since we didn't actually, we don't actually know what exactly happened. Yeah, we have happened no idea. Anything, but you don't want to tell the truth all the time in the most unpleasant way possible, or, or you know, just tell the truth as a way of telling other people how wrong yeah. and and idiotic or whatever they are. Um, right. I mean, there's always there, there's nothing telling the truth is always right, but but there's always more than one way to do it. And sure. I, you know, who knows? Who knows exactly but what I feel happens? Like both of us. It's too bad there's no video. I would actually yeah, really I, enjoy watching. Uh, uh, <laughs> Kevin uh, uh, and and Matt Walsh. I, I would enjoy watching all of this. But yeah, me too. It seems like it was really controversial. So yeah, I'm just saying that I could see how the two of those, uh, the two of them, on opposite sides of something, could get uh, very heated. Right. And um, that they could put people off. I don't. But again, going back to the fact that no one took any video of this. Yeah. <laughs> Shockingly, even though it's, this is like the big controversy right now on on the, the online right. Everyone's talking about this on Facebook and Twitter and writing posts about it. Nobody has any video, so how can I say, oh, Matt Walsh was the jerk, or right. Kevin Williamson was the jerk, you when really I, can't, can't. I can't, I can't, I have no, I only have a few minor quotes, and they don't seem that off-putting yeah. to me. Nothing I've seen in actual direct quotes seems all that, all that controversial about me. Right. Um, but apparently, but it room, has to be something if you end up with a Facebook thread that has 300. Yeah. I mean, I don't even really do Facebook, but right. I mean, I know that if, if you get that many Facebook comments, something somebody said something that. So uh, I don't know what happened, 
Yeah. But, uh, Apparently it was very, very uh, heated, but you know, uh, only the people in the room will really know for sure what, it, what, uh, who was right and who was wrong, who was a jerk and who wasn't. You right. Know? Um, but I think more important than than that, more important than figuring out whether Matt Walsh is a big jerk or Kevin Williams is, is the actual conversation they had and the actual topic, which is how conservatives uh, or. I think in their case, it was more how Republican political candidates should engage in culture, yeah. or if they should at all. Because I guess Matt Walsh's point is that they shouldn't. Uh, from what I what he, he wrote on Twitter, so something that actually direct quote from him, uh, he's more he thinks that the larger culture is what drives pop culture, um, not the other way around, basically. And uh, it's not pop culture that drives politics essentially, and so it doesn't really even matter. We don't need to know the latest uh, plot line on Game of Thrones or something like that to, to have success politically or even um, in society. I, it's I, more I, important to like preserve the, the family structure and things like that, Right. whereas the other people on the panel would say that, uh, I think uh, Williamson said that pop culture is only uh, important insofar as it runs the world, <laughs> right? Right. Um, and well, he has a point. You know what's... I think they both have legitimate points. I think you ignore it at your peril. No, you don't have to, like, put on airs and pretend that you like this stuff or that you care. And I actually do want to see Game of Thrones at some point, but I never have watched a single episode of it. So, you know, you, you only have so much time for, for whatever, but... Uh, but, you know, it, it, this isn't about, like, trying to act like you care about something. Like, there are some parts of pop culture that I, like, am into and, and like and care about, and some of them that I just don't and do not. It's cool. <laughs> oh, smash. So I think there's, there's definitely ways you can use culture uh, to help political campaigns. Right. Uh, Oh, I'd president. give you a great example, like David Dewhurst and uh, using Frozen. That was brilliant. Uh, whoever sure. thought that up out there, <laughs> that was actually like the worst video I've ever seen. It was there were some there's some pretty bad attempts to use culture Absolutely. for some of these things. That, uh, Absolutely, and that's the that's the problem that that a lot of people fall into is doing it well. Shoot it! Shoot it with your gun! Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I know I what I did to you there. <laughs> no! Get, come on, I don't know what you're doing. Yes! Yes! Giant gun! Oh, stop getting me with that thing! Yes! Thank you. I won one! You finally beat me. You can't deny the hope. Look at him, he's destroying the earth. You can educate people about economics, you can teach them that there are unintended consequences. You, can, um, you know, you can show them those sorts of things a lot, a lot more easily, I think, than you can. Although, the, I mean, there are also, you know, numerical ways to demonstrate things like the decline of the family, that sort of effect it has in society. But again, you're usually dealing with material questions there, where you say, well, look, you, you see how you know, this leads to greater poverty, it leads to greater social decline in, in sure. you know, easily measured ways. Um, I think it's a lot harder to convince people you should live this way because this is what will make you happy. Does that mean? Go down the ground. Eat it. You know. Back in America, taste the freedom. <laughs> Yes, giant gun. I love that gun. That gun's awesome. Bye, Magnum. Come on, Hulk. What are you doing? Get it, get it killed. No, oh, stop doing this. <laughs> hey, it God. works. I mean, hey, you're coming. Whoa, whoa, Hulk. Get together. Get back. Just kept hitting. What is that? I just kept pushing B. It Awful. just kept working, so I kept doing it. That's just where I, s I see the real issue here is, is that everyone wants to talk about how, you know, Republican candidates can use Flappy Bird to win votes, but 
the real issue is using um, culture to get in our idea to help me get into the culture. Yeah. Not as any sort of trojan uh, dance. It's not just a gimmick or a... Uh, yeah. No, you don't want to do it as some sort of like boy. It's just... I, I think doing something like what I'm trying to do with this show, you know, I actually enjoy gaming. I enjoy politics, so I enjoy, uh, and I'm conservative, so I, I, I think that being in that uh, conversation is what's important. Right. Um, not, you know, not trying to uh, sort of do or anything like that you don't really care about just because you want to speak to certain people on, you know. Right. But actually just engaging in areas that you, you genuinely have a passion for and um, trying to uh, show show the people that are in that sphere what you believe uh, and what other people in, like you believe. And uh, the left has been doing this for decades and they've been doing it very successfully and uh, it permeates um, most of our entertainment and culture. Yeah. You know, and they're not necessarily doing it, I don't think the majority of them are doing it because they are, you know, George Soros minions and they're trying to yeah. brainwash people. I think they're just, that's what they believe in and they also like making TV, you know, comedy TV shows um, and their worldview comes through in it. And that, that I think is the best approach. That you go do what you enjoy and um, let your ideas flow through it. Right. Well, you, rather than trying to hand fist them into something. Yeah. One example I think is, is, is very positive um, of the culture affecting politics is the way that over the last 50 years, uh, racism was completely considered commonplace at one point. And all of it uh, is totally stigmatized. And that's a good thing. That's exactly what we should want. Um, and that required political change, but it also required it required the culture to change before politics could catch up with it. And that happened. Smash! No, I'm not doing smash. Yes, come on. No, hit him! Oh. Yeah, Yo! Well, anyway, thanks for coming on. <laughs> we uh, appreciate having you on. What are you working on? Anything good coming up? Well, uh, just you know, normal stuff. Writing, uh, I read a Luke Conk for Washington Examiner, like mm -hmm. conservative intelligence briefing. Um, yes, conservative intelligence briefing is one of my favorite new sites. Um, thank you. One of the ones I visit a lot. Well, it's. It's always an interesting time to be involved in politics, but I think right now we're seeing uh, incredible, we're seeing incredible change in our culture right now. Mm -hmm. You have to wonder exactly what our political scene is going to look like in a few years, because I do think it's going to have an enormous effect. Um, even what's kind of, it's kind of crazy to look back at 2004 and the battles over gay marriage at that time. Mm -hmm. The dynamic has almost completely reversed itself. And where is that going to have a place in politics in the future? Are we just sort of going to enter yeah. a period where, I mean, now it's sort of like a, a new court is striking down marriage laws yeah. in every state, every every. I week. do think that that's a little bit over, I think it's a little bit oversold um, a lot of times because, um, or at, least, at the very least, it's a case of uh, media bias. In my opinion, this, this idea that it's inevitable that every state's going to have to be And I, yeah, no, I agree with that. And because the fact that courts are having to do it now, I right, think is a. Is we a haven't seen a lot of actual progress as far as votes go. There's been a couple. How many? Like maybe three, four that have actually voted for the election. Um, you mean like the legislature, or you mean like anyone? Either a referendum. There have or been there legislature. have been some of each. I mean, I think Minnesota. But uh, there have only been a couple it. of them. Most of it's come through the courts. Yeah, the courts. Um, the courts have been the most active on this. That's right. Absolutely. Um, most of the time, the courts act in overturning laws that were not that long ago passed. Mm -hmm. um, but my point, uh, you know, I, I do think there's been a shift in public opinion for sure. Um, but I think but my point is that. Even with a lot of the court action, that still only announced something like 14 states that, um, that have utilized their marriage. And mostly in the Northeast. Uh, yeah, I, I'd have to look it up, but it's not anywhere near a majority yet of the states. Yeah. Um, and that's always called inevitable. It was even called inevitable 
back, you know, 10, 10, 10 states ago. You know what I mean? We, it was uh, called we, inevitable almost immediately after, you know, even before any state made it. <laughs> yeah. Um, we ran a poll like a year ago where we just pulled the states that had not legalized it at that right. point. Um, and, you know, so you're, you're pulling states that I think are much more conservative mm -hmm. that way. But the idea was, okay, well, we've seen part of the country adopt gay marriage. Well, how does the rest of it feel about it? Are they about doing the same thing? And, you know, by and large, that portion that you can, you can look it up from a year ago, that portion of the country uh, was pretty strongly opposed. But there were, you know, there were clear signs that um, it, it was, you know, it was a... It was a battle waiting to be fought that uh, the sure. courts seem to be trying to settle now, but um, right. I mean, I don't know that that's, uh, even if you're for gay marriage, um, I don't know that that's the way you want to see it settled. Right. The court settled abortion, and we've been doing nothing but fighting about that ever of since. I just think things like gay marriage that are trending in the direction that most journalists agree with, right. in yeah. the direction, they call those things no, that's the narrative. Because they want them, to, they want them to be a major. Yeah. Things that are far more popular and have had far many, uh, far more successes in actual law, uh, in actual votes. Yeah. Those things are never labeled inevitable. Those things are never, even if they're like concealed carry, is every single state now. Uh, the only holdout is DC, and that'll probably be overturned by the courts eventually. Eventually. Um, almost certainly. I mean, this shall carry will probably be the prevailing law throughout the entire country eventually. And that'll be better for uh, everyone because if you, the problem with may, there's, so there's the issue is shall, shall issue versus may issue. Right. Which um, may issue is the one that all the liberal states like because that means that any, it's up to the discretion of the local sheriff. Or, and they can yeah. deny you for pretty much any reason in a lot of these states. Well, I mean, that's a case where you had most of the states, it was through the political process, and then the last couple of holdouts, the courts have been getting involved. Of course. Like Illinois and, uh, right. Um, yeah, I and mean, it's, not, it's not to say that court action is never necessary. Um, I don't think it's inconsistent for gay marriage advocates to want, want uh, judicial action uh, based on their arguments of what uh, that, how they justify their marriage. Um, I don't think it's, it's obviously the best course of action is through the legislature and the votes, but, right. but that's, uh, you know, I don't think it's wrong to use judicial action to advocate for uh, overturning bad laws, or unconstitutional, not bad, but unconstitutional. The point is that in situations where, you know, this just goes back to a new thing, like, things that have been far more popular and far more successful right. and never if they just if they're not in the vein of what a liberal journalist would believe, they're never labeled uh, as successful or, or uh, inevitable. Inevitable Basis, or even yeah. even just like accepted. Like partial birth birth abortion. Right? That's that's something that not only is illegal everywhere. That one goes in the controversial category. Yeah, that that's not, controversial. Right. So that that goes in controversial not in just accepted um, belief of the country. The polls have that at all. I mean, and that's partial birth abortion. Polls have uh, 20 week uh, bans at 80, you know, as we talked about before, 80, 85 percent. And it's like, it's not even close. But those are never inevitable. They're never just common values. They're always controversial. And I always feel like they're, the narrative is that they're, they're sort of, it's wrong that these laws exist now because um, they're so controversial. Right. Reality or not. Yeah. But you know, that's just just how I how I see a lot of this. Th thanks for coming on. Hey man, I thanks appreciate for it. Me. Uh, hopefully we can have you again on uh, pretty soon. Would love it was to. It's a lot of fun. Well, and who, besides, you, you have to get way better at this. I know. Thing. I, think I just you won. picked three of the guys that ran, but I don't know. <laughs> I think I won. I think you won two, three, or three. Four. I think it's more like four or five. <laughs> <laughs> You better, you better work on improving on this. Really. <laughs> I'm sorry. serious. I'll do my best. All right. <laughs> maybe we'll have a rematch next time. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks again.